It's time now for Bible Talk. Join our hosts, Gary Gibbs and John Bradshaw, speakers for the Amazing Facts Ministry, as they now open the Bible and discuss themes that affect your life today. Stay tuned, because the next 15 minutes will deepen your understanding of God's Word. Hi, friend, and welcome again to Bible Talk. I'm John Bradshaw. With me is Gary Gibbs. Hey, Gary. John, it's good to be here with you today, and we are looking forward to studying in depth into some very interesting topics, aren't we? We are, and I, I tell you what has, has kind of prompted my thinking recently is, is this exchange I had with a, with a gentleman not long ago. We were talking about his need for being baptized, and, and he recognized that he had accepted Jesus Christ as his Lord and Savior, wanted to give his life to him, and so he thought, yes, I need to be baptized. And then he asked me a very interesting question, and a Upon the answer to this question, his whole baptism stood or fell. Are you ready for this? Go ahead. Had to be a big question, because if I didn't answer it correctly, he may choose that baptism wasn't the right thing for him to do, which is remarkable because we know that the Lord has said that believers ought to be baptized. Am I right? That's right. In fact, uh, he ties it into salvation. That baptism ties right in there in Mark 16. He absolutely does. And so this friend said to me, he said, I've got a question for you. I'm all ears. I said to him, and he said, I want to know how you baptize. And we had already talked about the biblical method of baptism, which is baptism mm-hmm. by immersion. Mm-hmm. And he said, uh, what I want to know is whether you baptize in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, or whether you baptize in the name of Jesus only. Have you ever heard such a thing? You know, I have, John, because I've, I've met people, and I, I want to kind of present here their point of view and challenge you, and this might even take you back to that conversation that you had with this individual person. So let me take you to a Bible text All right, right here, and let's kind of just walk through that, and you can kind of tell us maybe a little bit of what you told this person. But if you go to Acts chapter 8, it sounds like right here that baptism, true baptism, that is, you know, bona fide baptism, according to the Bible, is in the name of Jesus Christ only. So look here at uh, Acts chapter 8. It says in verse 16, For as yet he, the Holy Ghost, was fallen upon none of them, only they were baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. Well, no, stop right there. You see, he didn't want to get baptized in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, nor did he want to be baptized in the name of, as you just read, the Lord Jesus. To him, he had to be baptized in the name of, of Jesus Christ. It could be no other way. And if the officiating minister did not say those words in that formula at the time of his baptism, if he didn't say, I baptize you now in the name of Jesus Christ, then according to this man's perspective, he wasn't baptized and it wasn't even worth doing. Well, then what we're looking at then is Acts chapter 2, verse uh, 38. It says, Peter said unto them, repent and be baptized every one of you in the name of Jesus Christ. Well, there it is. So there you have uh, what a lot of people look at, and they say, if you're not baptized in the name of Jesus Christ, you've not been baptized. Well, I'm wondering why in the world someone would come off with this line of thinking. I guess because this is Pentecost, and Peter is speaking under the inspiration of the Holy uh, Spirit. This is very definitely the the New Testament Christian church. Mm -hmm. But my friend now has a dilemma. Is he to be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ? Or is he to be baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus, as it is over there in the book of Acts chapter 8? Well, he doesn't realize his dilemma, because, John, here's really what's happening. I've met preachers that do this, and they they talk to people, and they're really what they're after. Let's face it. A lot of pastors, they are evaluating not only on how good a sermon they preach on Sunday or whichever day they have their church services on, and not only on if their church is growing, but really how many people are coming to Christ. And that is, uh, you know, signified by baptism. So they want to count baptisms. And some churches, what they do is they go after people who may have already been baptized by immersion. But they're told, these people are told, your baptism wasn't really Bible baptism. Because because you were baptized in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. And I want to read that passage to you now, because here you've got Jesus in Matthew chapter 28 saying one thing. Peter, in Acts chapter 2, saying another, the writer of Acts uh, saying something else in the book of Acts chapter Mm 8. In Matthew 28, and this was part of my answer to this friend, hey, if you're in a dilemma, follow what Jesus said, follow what Jesus did, follow the words of Jesus, and you cannot possibly go wrong. But I can tell you what he said to you after you read this text. You go ahead and read it. All right, then, and while I'm doing that, you gaze into the future for me. 
Uh, Matthew chapter 28, go ye therefore and teach all nations. And that means make disciples of all nations, mm-hmm. the teach part. Mm-hmm. Baptizing them. But he didn't leave it there. He said, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost. But what, what do you think that text is saying? Well, listen, I'll tell you very, very clearly what I think this text is saying and what Peter's getting at over there in Acts chapter 2. Well, let's not go that far. What's this text saying? All right. First things first. Jesus said, go out, make disciples, bring people to me, bring them to Christ, bring them to faith in the God of heaven, and then baptize them. And as you do baptize them in the name of, that is under the authority of, Mm -hmm. that is accepting the lordship of in your life, accepting the governance, submitting to the God of heaven, who is Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. You you could call this the, the Trinity, the Godhead, put whatever label yeah, well, on that, it you that's, like. That's where you get in trouble with the name of the Jesus-only baptism doctrine, because here's what they'll say. They'll say, but it says the name, singular, it doesn't say the names of the Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. It's the name, and that there's only Jesus only. He is the Father. He is the Son. He is the Holy Spirit. Now, how how can you read the Bible? And I I respectfully suggest this because this is a Christian program and I'm going to do my very best to maintain a Christian demeanor. But how in the world? (laughs) That's your best best take at being a a Christian, is it? (laughs) Well, I mean, Christians can ask these questions. The question being, how in the world can you read the Bible and come up with the idea that Jesus is the Father and Jesus is? is the Holy Spirit, as well as Jesus being Jesus. You've got a picture there in Matthew chapter 3 where Jesus himself is being baptized, and and you've got Christ Jesus in the water. The Father thunders his voice down from heaven above. The Holy Spirit descends upon him in the form of a dove. You have three individual persons in Mm -hmm. that picture. You can't suggest that Jesus is somehow dividing himself up, his ventriloquism that he's practicing and throwing his voice down from heaven. I mean, how do you get around that? John, you're forgetting Isaiah 9, verse 6. For unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given. The government shall be upon his shoulder. Now, who's that talking about? That's talking about Christ. Okay, now listen. The rest of the verse says, his name shall be called called Wonderful Counselor, the Mighty God, the Everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace. That's very interesting. So Jesus is called the Father, and he's also called the Counselor. He's the Mighty God. All right. So he is the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit. Well, you know, Jesus is called a lot of things in the Bible. There's no question about that. What you've got here, and this is something that people need to recognize, is you have a, a, a unity in the Godhead. Uh, you have the Father, the Son, the Spirit, three persons, but not moving independently of each other. Not uh, independent atoms that just get together on weekends or anniversaries. These are three that are in, of one mind, of one thought, of one purpose. There is no question. So anything that Jesus does is all done with deference to and in reference to the mind of the Father, the mind of the Spirit. Okay, but so Jesus is not the Father? No, Jesus isn't the Father. So there's a separate person. So you have three gods. Well, you have one God and three individuals who comprise this God. We started off talking about baptism, and now we're talking about the nature of the Godhead, but that's Bible talk for you. That's right. And friend, if you've got questions about this, make sure you, you catch our number, get our address, get our email, whatever you like, and contact us At after the end this of the program, program. That's right. and get further information of this. Now, but, you've, you've proposed this conundrum, and so in doing so... And let, let me tell you why, John. Let you, me interrupt you. You must have a good way out of this. Let me tell you why, because... This Jesus only thing goes back to that because we're talking about pe- preachers. I brought it up who tell people who've already been baptized in the biblical method by immersion yes. that they need to be rebaptized because they were not truly baptized if they were not baptized in the name of Jesus Christ only. So somehow the, the so now you come the back words. to Matthew twenty eight nineteen. The words take on magical meaning. That's right. And they'll say, you know, if you were baptized in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. You were baptized in a misinterpretation of this text because it says the name is singular. And the name of the Father, Son, Holy Ghost is Jesus. And now this whole argument transitions into how do you view the Godhead? Mm -hmm. Why don't you do two things for us, John? First, why don't you show us that the texts that uh, talk about baptizing the name of Jesus Christ in, in the book of Acts. I'd love to do that. Are not consistent and then why don't you also, if we have time in this program, we may not, but why don't you uh, recap again 
the Godhead and how that plays into this. Well, you've got Acts chapter 2, repent ye therefore and be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. Over there in uh, Acts chapter 8, and I'm turning to it in my Bible right now, Acts chapter, well, I had the page open, what do you know? It says they were baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. So, So you had someone in the name of Jesus Christ, someone else in the name of the Lord Jesus. Mm -hmm. And then in Acts chapter 19, and uh, I'm thinking we're right around verse 5 there, Acts 19 verse 5, when they heard this, they were baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. So it's not the same exact words. And and let me suggest this to you before I forget where you were going, where you were directing me a moment ago. We do not have a single instance in all of sacred scripture where the words uttered at a baptism are recorded. Hmm. You don't have John the Baptist saying, I now baptize you in the name of anybody. You don't hear it. You sure? You don't have Peter saying anywhere, I now baptize you in the name of. Boy, I thought I've heard it so many times. I thought it was right there in the Bible. You'd think it'd be written on the cover of the Bible, the way some people go. But it, it, it just isn't there. We can't afford as Christians to get hung up on a formula. Have faith in Christ. Follow the Bible. Be baptized. It's not like there's a magic phrase or a magic formula that makes you more baptized than others. Now, me. If Jesus said be baptized in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit, accepting them, you know, I may come to you in the name of the, of the President of the United States. I'm Mm -hmm. here in the name of the President. Uh, You know, you know what it means. Mm -hmm. We don't have to analyze that thing to death. Okay. In, in Acts 10 48 says, I'll be baptized in the name of the Lord. So your point is well taken. There is not a set consistent formula of words. So what were the disciples after then when they said, They were baptizing in the name of the Lord Jesus or in the name of the Lord or in Jesus Christ. Why didn't they say the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit? Okay, let me do this in uh, 60 seconds or so. Acts chapter 2, Feast of what? Pentecost. Feast of Pentecost, yes. And there are believers, Jewish believers, Mm -hmm. uh, Jews. From every nation, they said, under heaven. From all around. Peter was preaching about who? Jesus Christ. The fact that he had been put to death and that he'd been raised from the dead. The people were pricked in their hearts. He was presenting to them Jesus as the Messiah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And they said, men and brethren, what shall we do? And he said, repent and be baptized, every one of you, Mm -hmm. in the name of Jesus Christ. In other words, be baptized, accepting Jesus Christ as the Messiah. You get that in Acts chapter 19 as well. Verses 5 and 4. You've got it right there. So in being baptized in the name of Jesus was being baptized, accepting Jesus Christ as the Messiah. And a lot of people need to recognize that Christ is not Jesus' last name. What Christ means is Messiah. It's the Greek version of the Hebrew Messiah. So it's saying, I recognize Jesus is the promised Messiah. Do we need to get hung up about exactly what the preacher says when a person is standing in the water? Probably not, but we need to take this up in our next program. And that's what we'll do, friend. Thanks for being here. We'll look for you again. Join us for more next time on Bible Talk. If you'd like more information on what we've been studying today, we have a comprehensive Bible study guide we'd love to share with you that's absolutely free. This study includes many of the texts we've just discussed and expands on the subject, including information you'll want to know. To receive this free informative Bible study guide, simply call, write, or email and ask for BT103. Is there anything left you can trust? The toll-free number is 866-BIBLE-SAYS. That's 866-242-5372. You can write to us at Bible Talk, P.O. Box 1058, Roseville, California, 95678. Or email us at BibleTalk at LifeTalk.net. Bible Talk has been produced in association with Amazing Facts in the studios of LifeTalk Radio.